Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am PD Worski, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. In the six videos zero of this 10 part video tutorial series, I want to show you how you can sell virtual products such as uh, roles to your site or licensed files um, and allow users to purchase those and then have access to whatever it is they're purchasing. Uh, in order to do that, we're going to take a look at the module Commerce License, which is a pretty crazy module that I've relied on for a number of projects. Uh, but before we do that, I'm over at torontowebsitedeveloper.com slash store. Here you can purchase my video tutorial series as I produce them. I've got most up. I think I've got one or two outstanding. This one obviously isn't up because I haven't finished it. But each sale goes to help me continue to develop these tutorials, keep them free, keep them frequent. Uh, if you can't afford the $20 and would like to help out, please just leave a comment. Leave me a thumbs up on YouTube. I uh, greatly appreciate that as YouTube uses those types of analytics to help promote these video tutorials to other Drupal users. Now, with all that out of the way, why don't we head over to drupal.org slash project slash commerce license. And you'll notice here I was just reading up on the documentation for a commerce file. We're going to go ahead and grab those two modules. Uh, I recommend you use Drush because when you go to enable those modules, you'll notice that commerce license will require views bulk operation. It will require entity bundle plugin. And if you haven't already got them, though you should have for this video tutorial series, uh, entity reference, uh, entity API, C tools, uh, and so on. Uh, remote licenses, I'm not sure if we'll have time to cover that in this video tutorial, but it's pretty cool because you can ping a third-party API service for uh, license status, so a subscription status to that site, and then determine it for the site that you're using. Uh, and if we were going that route, we would also need the advanced queue. Um, I'd like to take a look at that. I've, I've used remote licenses. I think they're awesome. It's powerful, uh, but they would be a video tutorial, perhaps a, a small series in and of themselves. Um, so all of that said, Grab those modules, head back over to uh, your development site. You notice I'm at localhost slash commerce where I've been for this entire video tutorial series. I've gone, and enabled, gone ahead and enabled commerce uh, license, commerce license role, which comes with commerce license, and then commerce file. Uh, and it went ahead and enabled uh, use bulk operations and everything uh, associated with that. So just a quick uh, 30 seconds on what commerce license is. Essentially, it is a permit for your site to do something related to files or roles which we're going to set up right so uh, a user purchases a license they get a permit for whatever is attached to that license uh, and that's what makes it pretty powerful and pretty cool because you can attach a lot to that license uh, files and, and roles are just two examples but uh, you could expand that uh, and obviously the way that it's written with entities uh, it's easy to expand so let's go ahead and uh, I've gone in ahead and enabled those modules, uh, as I mentioned. So you'll see if I hover over store, I've got licenses. Uh, and if I click into licenses, this is an overview page for what licenses actually exist. Uh, they're entities. Uh, they're they're uh, an entity, just as we've talked about um, throughout this video tutorial series, uh, which makes it pretty cool, pretty powerful. It's pluggable, fieldable, all that kind of stuff. And you'll see how that uh, actually plays in here. So if I go to uh, store configuration, you'll see that I've got license settings here now. So I'm going to click into that. And here, uh, this is the overview for the license setting page. It will list all of your product types and your line item types and ask you which you want to associate uh, a commerce license with. Um, you know, it's few and far between that I find I ever need additional line item types. So more often than not, this will be checked off as a product. And you'll notice we need our, our product type here. I've got license just because I was playing around, but that's not really reflective of what we would be doing. So let's go ahead and add a product type. And I'm going to call this, uh, you know, license file. Actually, let's go with role because that comes with uh, commerce license. We'll look at those first. I'm going to go ahead and save add fields just to flag something for you here. You'll notice when we when we go to the fields for a commerce license uh, in the license role that we just created, it's only got the four fields, right? Now, when we go back over to configuration, we go to license settings, we're going to check off license role. This is a licensable product. We can save that configuration. And if I go over to the role tab here, you'll see now I can choose license role to be a product that I can associate a role with. Uh, no other product types are listed here because they weren't enabled on the first general tab. So go ahead and save that configuration. Now, if I go back over to products, let's look at product types, license role, manage fields. You should have two additional fields here. Commerce license type, commerce license duration. If you didn't get these, uh, it's happened for me when I was testing here because what I had done is created a bunch of product types added stuff, removed it, tried to delete the product types, brought them back in, and it didn't properly add these fields back onto the license role. It drove me nuts as I was trying to test things because licenses weren't being created. So just make sure after you've gone ahead and enabled that you have these two fields 
on what should be your product type that is licensable. Now, we've got this, this product type. Let's go ahead and create a product for it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a licensed role. Uh, I'm just going to call this, um, I don't know, what did I, uh, I think I called it like subscriber or something. So I'll just call it subscriber role as my SKU. Uh, subscriber role. I don't know, you pay 10 bucks. You get the oh, licensed user role. And I'm going to make this limited. You're going to get this for one month. And you'll notice here months are 30 days long. So just flag that. And we'll go ahead and we'll save that product. Now we've created the product, but as you know, we need to create a product display. We have a generic product display here, um, which is product display. But you'll need to go into manage fields product. And here you're going to want to check off licensed role. I'm just going to take off license there. So uh, whatever you're doing, whether you're using a generic display or you're creating a new display, just make sure that you have reference to that so you can create a product display for users to find your content. Now we're going to create a new product display. I'm just going to call this, uh, you know, uh, licensed role display. And oh crap, what do we call it? Subscriber role. Okay, let's go ahead and save that. Right. And so here, now you'll see we've got this nice product display. Um, it's associated with the subscriber role, licensed user. They're getting the, uh, it's a license type of role and they're getting it for 2 million seconds, which is kind of a pain. So if we go back over to configuration, actually sorry, product types, licensed role, manage display. Here, license duration, we can actually choose, I don't know if this is gonna change things up or not. We'll get rid of this license type, nobody cares about that. Um, and we'll go ahead and save this. And now if we go back to our content, you'll see that we get one month um, and they're a licensed user. Um, so that's kind of nice. So you can play with things that way. I'm not going to go into that. I mean, obviously this is a, a moot point. We're just trying to look at the functionality. So now that I've got this, um, let's use an anonymous user to actually purchase that license role. Before we do that, uh, I'm just going to flag for you a couple of catch-ups in permissions. So one thing is checkout. You're going to want to have access to checkout. Uh, I haven't had this enabled for other video tutorials in the series. So I'm giving it to anonymous users and authenticated users. Um, the other thing I think is licenses or something like that. Uh, I want them to be able to view their own licenses. So uh, every user who makes a purchase by a rule set up with commerce license is going to get a user account. So that's why it's only authenticated users. Um, and then I think orders. I'm just going to give them the ability to uh, view their own orders of any type, anonymous users and authenticated users can can do that. So those are permissions that you want to check out. Uh, I highly recommend you check out all their permissions for commerce because they're, they're, there's quite a lot and you want to make sure that you're giving the right access to the right people. Now, I've got an anonymous user account here. Uh, actually, I'm just going to log out. And so licensed uh, role display, so they can go ahead and add that to their cart. When they go to their cart, uh, they can go to checkout because we gave them access to checkout. Now, they're just going to enter in their stuff. So I don't know. I'll just go p at p.com. Their full name is Pete. And they're just at test, test, Alberta, whatever. They're going to continue to the next page. Now, I'm going to pause you here. And if we go back to the site and we go to licenses, you're going to see that one license has actually already been created. It gets created as soon as that order gets created. But you'll notice that. Uh, there's no access details. It's been created. It's not actually active. It hasn't been granted. It hasn't, it doesn't expire. Um, so that's just one thing to flag because these licenses are going to get activated on payment. Uh, I'm going to show you that in a second. So what I've gone ahead and done is enabled the example payment uh, module. Just so that we can go ahead and do this. We can just go test and continue to the next step. And this will actually complete the order. And you'll see here that their order is now complete. And if we go back over here and we reload this page, you'll see that their license has actually been granted and it has an expiry date now and it's active. The reason why this happened is because when you enable commerce license, if you go to workflow rules, commerce license is going to activate licenses when an order is paid in full and or when uh, there's a free order. So two rules here that actually come with this, uh, you may want to change this up. Um, I've had projects where, you know, orders aren't necessarily quote unquote like paid in full. There, there's other things associated with that. So we wanted to activate on a completion. So what we had to do is disable that order, create a new rule, and you check to see if the order is complete, uh, and then you activate the rule. Um, so uh, now if we go back to our front page, I can, um, what I can do is I can go to uh, people here, 
and you can see that p.com is now a licensed user. Uh, they have an account, um, and so I could just give them a password, and they can log in, do whatever they want to do. So they have now purchased a role. Um, so that's that's roles. Files are almost very similar. There's again a few catch-ups. So let's go ahead and create those now together as well. Similar structure. We're going to go ahead and create a product type. Um, we're going to call this a licensed uh, file. If I could type, I apologize. We'll uh, save and add fields. Again, you're going to see only four fields are here, so that's good. We're going to go with configuration, license settings. I'm going to move fast because this is all pretty much standard. License file now. We're going to go over to the file tab. We're going to say you can attach files to only the license file tab. Same way the role, you can only attach it to licensed roles. Uh, limit number of downloads. Nope, the users purchased it. We are going to give them time duration. Again, checking out product types, license file here. Should have gone to manage fields. You'll see we've got the, the type, the duration, the file now. So if I go to products, let's add a product of a commerce license file. I'm going to call this, uh, I don't know, uh, Suzy file. I don't know. Uh, download, uh, whatever, Suzy pick. Right, uh, you're gonna pay $50 because Suzy's amazing. Uh, limited duration, so you'll have access to the file for two days. I'm gonna choose a file here. And actually, I have to show you something. This is one of my favorite photos of Suzy. Um, so you can add a description, that kind of thing. We'll, we'll save the product. Now, it allowed me to save because what I forgot to show you was under configuration media file system, I went ahead and created a private file path. You want to have this outside of your actual web directory because you don't want users to be able to access it. So I just went with slash private, the slash indicating it's going to the beginning of the web route and going into a folder called private. And so if I grab Drush here, I can just show you that. So I'll just go to D, oops, cd dot 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 list. You'll see I have a private folder here. If I go cd private, oops, cd private, and I list the files there. You'll see I have three files. They're all photos because I was testing things out. Um, but those are the only files that are in there, right? So make sure you've set up this private file system, otherwise you're going to get problems. Um, I don't know why you would want to, but I guess, if, uh, yeah, you would never want to, but when you actually go in to manage the fields here for file, you could choose public files. Actually, good, it won't even allow you because it's a little bit ridiculous, and it's probably because we've already created a uh, product. But here in the setup, it's actually using the private files. That's why it's using that private file folder. Um, additionally, you can set the actual file extensions you want to upload with that. So uh, again, two things that I didn't flag for you, but uh, just be conscious of. So now, again, we create a new product type, so my generic product display no longer works. So I'm going to go into product, and I'm going to say you can use licensed files. Again, remember, create the product, create the display. So now I'm going to go add content, product display, uh, Suzy picture. Yeah, whatever. Um, what do we call it? Suzy or something like that? Suzy pick. So we'll go ahead and save that. So there we go. We can see the license file type, license duration. Uh, we can see the actual file because we're the administrator. Let's take a look at what an anonymous user would see. Go to the home page. Here's Suzy pick. They see that they would get the license file. They see that they get the duration for 172,000 seconds. Again, you can change that. Go ahead, add that to the cart. Now when they go to the cart, they can see they're purchasing this. Check this out. Uh, we'll just go, I don't know, s at s.com, test, 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 Alberta test, do the next step. Right, again, if we head back, we'll now see that there are two licenses that have been created. They have Suzy Pick Anonymous, but they don't actually have access to it yet. And so now what we're going to do is just go here, we'll go test, and we'll continue. And you'll see that uh, they now have uh, a completed order. And if we reload this, you'll see that they now have access to this file. Uh, it's active and, and whatnot. And so if they got the email to be able to log in, let's go ahead and actually show what that looks like. So let's edit this account. I just create a password of 123456. Don't know why I told you that, but I did. You now know my secrets. Uh, let's go ahead and what was it? SLS.com. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can now log in. Uh, and if you go to my account, where the tab resides for files is under my account. So you can see if they go to files here, you can now have access to uh, Suzy Pick here. They can go ahead and they can download that. 
if you want to give them access to the file when they've completed the order, um, this is going to be a, a tricky one because uh, I've never actually done this. I just know of it. So we're going to go into checkout settings and there's a pane here, uh, license completion message. Um, let's do both of these. So you see here, all of these panes, these are all the different checkout points that we had, right? Remember these from coupons where we added coupons to the review order. On the checkout completion, let's move these messages up. Let's go ahead and save that configuration. Now we're going to go back and we're going to log out. We're going to have, we're going to do this with a new user, see how this actually looks. So we'll add to cart. And now it might not allow us because it doesn't actually log us in, but we'll check this out anyways. So uh, test to uh, test two.com doesn't really matter. Test, 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 test. Do the next step out. This is the next pane, review order pane. We'll go ahead and we'll just example payment. Yeah, that's great. Continue to the next. And so here we go. Here's the actual uh, checkout pane. And interestingly enough, you can see that um, here's access to the actual file, right? So here's the, the message. Thank you for purchasing Suzy Pick. Download now. There's the file right away. Uh, and you can give it to users as soon as they make their payment. Uh, they have access to that. And if they click on that, you can see that they can get it. Um, and that's it. That's all there is to purchasing roles and purchasing files. Hopefully this video tutorial helped you. Um, I think this is pretty cool. Commerce license is an amazing module. I've used it uh, quite a bit. I've customized it with remote licenses, which are also pretty cool. So hopefully we'll have time to check that out. Uh, let me know if you're interested in that because it is neat to ping a third party API for, you know, a status and then have it come back and interact with your site. Uh, you can do a lot of things with that. And you'll notice, uh, you know, if you were checking out when we were doing the orders, you can put remote order IDs onto those as well. So again, pretty neat. Um, we moved quickly. If this video tutorial helps you, please leave a comment, leave me a thumbs up. Let me know. I appreciate that feedback. Hopefully we'll see you for the next tutorial. Thanks very much for watching.